Can you come to order, please? Thank you. Uh, roll call. Press your present button, please. Where am I? Record it. Thank you. Uh, staff announcements. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I have a couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, let's uh, talk. Uh, we have a couple of withdrawals tonight. Uh, item 30 has been withdrawn, which is non residential site plan for Harper's Hollow treatment facility, and item 31, non residential site plan review for Sloan Farm Retreat. Um, secondly, um, Michael wanted me to make this announcement. Uh, Triune will be having a, uh, a uh, how would you describe the meeting? And um, I'll let you describe it, Mike. Yeah, so there's a, a, a meeting to discuss the, the Triune development standards on the 24th of September. That's a Tuesday evening, 6.30 at the First United Methodist Church. These are the standards that we're developing to help implement the Triune Special Area Plan, which you all adopted last fall. Thank you, Mike. Uh, third item is uh, you have before you um, a uh, notice of uh, the, the the fall T Tennessee Association American Planning Association is having their uh, fall uh, conference and there's a four hours of training opportunity uh, for planning commissioners on a couple of items that uh, for instance uh, one of them having to do with property rights that we we need to do and uh, I you know well, I will urge you to attend it's it's for fee so I have to uh, we'll have to pay for it, but I don't mind doing that out of one of my budgets. It's just I need to get a count and amount. So uh, we'll be following up with y'all as we get a little bit closer to the event to get a count and amount of who would like to attend. Okay? And it's usually pretty good. Yes? I would just add that you, you probably remember that you're required to get four Thank hours you. of continuing education each year, and so this is four hours of an opportunity. So I don't think that we'll be doing a separate training thing, so I, I would encourage you to attend this if you uh, at all can. All right, thank you, Mike. And last, I do want to make an introduction. Uh, Kane, if you'd stand up, please. Uh, Kane Hathcock is uh, going to be working with us for through the school year. Kane is a senior at Independence High School, and he's interested in going to architectural school. And he Good. approached us, and we're, we're we're working about ten hours a week, and he'll learn a little bit about planning a little bit about architecture we'll try to minimize the number of bad habits we teach him but we're we're happy to have him with us try to try to miss the bad habits Kane. Right. welcome at any rate uh that's all i have that's all i have mr chairman uh consideration of the minutes of august 8th any corrections changes motion we have a second. Yes. I'm sorry, I don't hear as well as I used to. Uh, prepare to vote. Vote now. Record it. Motion carries. Thank you. Consideration of the consent agenda. Any commissioner wishing to have an item pulled for separate discussion, please say so now. Otherwise, we'll take it as a whole. Anyone? I see no hands. Staff. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We'll begin with uh, item three, Bell Vista, section three, performance bond for roads, drainage and erosion control, located off Tom Anderson Road, $243,000. Recommendation convert to maintenance in the amount of $200,000 and extend for a period of one year. Item four, Burning Tree Farm, section two, performance bond for landscaping, located off Nolensville Road, $16,610. Recommendation extend in current amount for a period of six months. Item five, Burning Tree Farm, section two, performance bond for roads, drainage and erosion control, located off Dolansville Road, $198,000. Recommendation, extend in current amount for a period of one year. Item six, Curry Ingram Academy, performance bond for wastewater treatment disposal system, located off Murray Lane, $90,000. Recommendation, extend in current amount for a period of eight months. Item seven, Falls Grove, section two, maintenance bond for roads, drainage and erosion control, $250,000 recommendation extended current amount for a period of one year. Item eight, farms at Clovercroft section two, performance bond for roads, drainage and erosion control located off Clovercroft Road, $300,000 recommendation 
reduced to the amount of $225,000 and extend for a period of one year. Item 9, Farms at Clovercroft, Section 3, Performance Bond for Water, located off no Clovercroft Road, $11,625, recommendation, extended current amount for a period of one year. Item 10, Farms at Clovercroft, Section 3, Performance Bond for Roads, Drainage Erosion Control, located off Clovercroft Road, $545,000, recommendation, convert to maintenance, amount of $310,000 and extend for a period of one year. Item 11, Fox and Canyon, Section 1, Maintenance, uh, maintenance Bond for Landscape Buffer, located off Heartland Drive, $2,000, recommendation, release the bond. Item 12, Fox and Canyon, Section 1, Performance Bond for Roads, Drainage and Erosion Control, located off Heartland Drive, $383,000. Recommendation, convert to maintenance zoom out of $300,000 and extend for a period of one year. Item 13, Fox and Canyon, Section 2, Performance Bond for Roads, Drainage and Erosion Control, located off Heartland Drive, $271,000. Recommendation, convert to maintenance the amount of $271,000 and extend for a period of one year. Item 14, McDaniel Estates, Section 1, Performance Bond for Wastewater Collection System located off McDaniel Road, $169,000. Recommendation, extend in current amount for a period of six months. Item 15, McDaniel Estates, Performance Bond for uh, Section 1, Performance Bond for Water located off McDaniel Road, $255,000. Recommendation, defer to the October 2019 meeting. Item 16, McDaniel Estates, Section 1, Performance Bond for Roads, Drainage and Erosion Control located off McDaniel Road, $1,100,200. Recommendation, reduced to amount of... Uh, reduced to amount of $550,000 and extend for a period of one year. Item 17, McDaniel Estates, Section 1, Performance Bond for Landscaping located off McDaniel Road, $89,900. Recommendation, convert to maintenance in the amount of $27,000 and extend for a period of six months. Item 18, McDaniel Farms, Section 1, Performance Bond for Wastewater Collection System off, located off McDaniel, McDaniel Road, $125,000 recommendation extended current amount for a period of six months. Item 19, McDaniel Farm, Section 1, Maintenance Bond for Roads, Drainage and Erosion Control, located off McDaniel Road, $430,000 recommendation extended current amount for a period of one year. Item 20, Southern Preserve, Section 1, Performance Bond for Landscaping, located off Lewisburg Pike, $11,385. Recommendation, convert to maintenance amount of $3,500 and extend for a period of six months. Item 21, Southern Preserve Section 2, performance bond for landscaping located off Lewisburg Pike, $44,660. Recommendation, convert to maintenance amount of $13,500 and extend for a period of six months. Item 22, Swanson's Ridge, Section 1, performance bond for landscaping located off Kitchell Road, $60,000. Recommendation, extend in current amount for a period of six months. Item 23, Swanson's Ridge, Section 1, Performance Bond for Water, located off Kitchell Road, $253,000. Recommendation, release the bond. Item 24, Swanson's Ridge, Section 1, Performance Bond for Roads, Drainage and Erosion Control, located off Kitchell Road, $521,000. Recommendation, extend in current amount for a period of one year. Item 25, Water Relief Section 1, Maintenance Bond for Roads, Drainage and Erosion Control, located off Gosey Hill Road, $300,000. Recommendation extended current amount for a period of one year. Now dropping down to Item 32 under Final Plats. Final Plat Review for Vineyard Valley, Section 3, containing 26 lots on 37.58 acres located off Udaley Covington Road in the second voting district. Staff recommends approval with the following conditions. One, the posting and performance bond in the amount of $637,000 for roads, drainage, and erosion control. Two, the posting or maintenance bond in the amount of $35,000 for water improvements as specified by Millcroft and Utility District. Three, the posting or performance bond in the amount of $80,600 for wastewater collection system. Four, the posting or performance bond in the amount of $43,450 for landscaping improvements. Five, execution of stormwater maintenance agreement, submission of an operation and maintenance plan for stormwater improvements. And six, submission of approved final plat in DWG format on recordable media based on the Tennessee State Plan Coordinate System prior to signature and recording of this plat.
Thank you, sir. Motion on consent. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? I heard a vote. Vote now. Record it. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, under old business, agenda item 26, plenary plat review for King's Chapel Phase 9 containing zero lots on 123.682 acres located off of Murfreesboro Road in the 5th Voting District. Staff? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A revised concept plan for this development was approved at the September 2008 meeting. The applicant is now requesting preliminary plat approval for the ninth phase of the development which consists of no building lots, but approximately 119 acres of open space and the right-of-way of Majestic Meadows Drive. The applicant has requested action on this item be deferred until the October 2019 meeting in order to allow additional time to address staff's comments, and staff concurs with this request. Motion to defer. Second. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Prepare to vote. Vote now. Record it. Motion carries. Thank you. Agenda item 27. Preliminary plat review for King's Chapel Face 10 containing seven lots on 28.14 acres located off of Mercersburg Road in the 5th Voting District. Staff? A revised concept plan for this development was approved at the September 2008 meeting. The applicant is now requesting preliminary plat approval for the 10th phase of the development consisting of seven lots. The applicant has requested action on this item be deferred until the October 2019 meeting in order to allow additional time to address staff's comments and staff concurs with the, the request. Motion to defer. Was there a second? I'm sorry. Second. Thank you, Brian. By motion, uh, any further discussion? Prepare to vote. Vote now. Record it. Motion carries. Thank you. Agenda item, oh, I lost it. there it is, 28, non-residential site plans. Non-residential site plan review revised for Curry Ingram Academy on 82.79 acres located off Murray Lane in the 7th Voting District. Staff? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. A revised site plan for this use, which included the expansion of the existing non-traditional wastewater treatment and disposal system, was approved in March of 2019, and the applicant is now requesting approval of another revised site plan in order to add an approximately 9,200 square foot field house that will be comprised of dressing rooms and staff offices. According to the applicant's letter of intent, there will be no additional students enrolled and no new access points will be added to the site. The property in question is approximately 83 acres in size and is located at the intersection of Murray Lane and Beach Creek Road. Old Town Subdivision, which is located within the city of Brentwood, is to the east of the property in question. Other properties surrounding the property in question range in size from, from approximately 16 acres to 30 acres and are used for residential or agricultural purposes. Water service is provided by Harpeth Valley Utilities District. Wastewater generated by the use will be treated by a non-traditional wastewater treatment and disposal system. All zoning ordinance requirements have been met, including the specific requirements associated with educational facilities. Landscaping requirements have been met with previous approvals, and therefore no additional landscaping is required. The site plan is in order, and staff recommends approval with the following conditions. One, submission of an operation and maintenance plan for stormwater improvements. Two, submittal to and approval by the county engineer for the stormwater calculations and the grading and drainage plan prior to issuance of a land disturbance permit, and three, all signage must be approved per ordinance requirements. Thank you, sir. Ma'am, do you wish to make a comment? Why don't you come to the podium and see if there are any. Introduce yourself. I'm Christian Dalton, representing Green. Is her mic on? You guys covered there most of the material that, that I had here, but basically it's just a simple one-story structure. It was already previously approved as part of the master plan, but because of the square footage, it, it pushed us into um, a site plan review. So um, just very little disturbance, less than half an acre, building pad, a couple of access sidewalks, and bioretention to meet the LID for the for the stormwater. So if anybody has any questions, I just wanted any to make myself available. Anyone? Comments? Motion? 
Motion made and seconded. Prepare to vote. Vote now. Record it. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 29, non-residential site plan review for Page High School Phase 2 on 49.59 <coughs> acres located off Arno Road in the 5th Voting District. Staff? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The applicant is requesting approval of a revised site plan for Page High School, which includes approximately 101,900 square feet of new classroom space and a reconfigured parking area. A portion of the existing parking lot will be demolished and reconfigured to accommodate the new building. However, student enrollment will remain the same. The future widening of Arno Road has been taken into account as it relates to the associated access and drainage for the project, and the County Highway Department has been coordinating with the applicant on these plans. The property in question is approximately 49 acres in size and located on Arno Road. Adjoining parcels range in size from one acre to 60 acres, and are used for agricultural or residential purposes. The Stags Leap development borders the property to the southeast and west. Water service is provided by McCrofton Utility District, and wastewater is handled by a private sand filter system. Staff has received confirmation from the Williamson County School System that the wastewater system can accommodate the proposed use. During the Planning Commission's recent review of the site plan for Page Middle School, discussions were held regarding the need for safe connectivity between the middle school and high school. The applicant has coordinated with the Williamson County Highway Department to create a safe crossing across Arno Road for students. This crossing is shown on, on sheet C21 and further detailed on sheet C64 of the site plan. The applicant will also be present to answer any specific questions as, it, as they relate to the crossing. All zoning ordinance requirements have been met, including the specific requirements associated with educational facilities. The submitted landscape plan has been reviewed and approved by staff. The site plan is in order, and therefore staff recommends approval of the revised site plan. And I'd just add that Kevin Fortney, um, representing the schools, is here, as is the um, consultant for the project. Good. Come join us. We'll have our usual discussion. <laughs> you got it. Any questions of Mr. Fortney or his... You're the architect, the engineer, or both? Engineer. Okay. I, or his engineer. Anyone? I do. How wide is the sidewalk? I, the sidewalk I, crossing for the, the pedestrian crossing? Yeah. Uh, six feet. Is that all? That, that's all we've got right, right now for the, that particular crossing. Uh, we're, we're actually working with uh, the traffic engineer to determine uh, the exact signal configuration. The what? And what is that? It's uh, basically it's uh, you have, have push buttons on either side, and it, it looks similar to a traffic light, but not like you would, would have for a pedestrian uh, or a vehicular crossing. But when you push the button, you get flashing red lights, stop bars on both sides, so you come to a true stop condition, and then it, it gives you warning signals when, uh, mm. just like if you're if you're a pedestrian walking across. Get the flashing red do not walk signs you, you get the same signals to the automobiles on when that is it a visible signals. or audible <coughs> signal it's it's similar i can i can yes say again it's a visible signal okay so you've got two flashing red lights okay each direction and then there's another light at the minute that is a yellow light everything stays black when there's no command Right. When a student or a pedestrian pushes the button, then you get starting of a flashing yellow light. Caution. Right. right. And then it goes to a steady on yellow light, and the traffic to, there's a red light coming, and then two red lights. Can the students see these lights? Can the school see the No, lights? can the student standing there pushing a the button see when he can go with they're all this going, blinking light going on? They're going to be looking at a Across the street. Across the street. That's okay. signal across the street. And in that, there'll be a timer that counts down the seconds. You know, get yourself moving. You've got X number of minutes before, or seconds before this light starts to change. 
Okay. Anyone else have questions? Beth? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just appreciate y'all so much, and I wanted to say with Kevin Fortney, I've worked with him for years, thanks for all you do. Sure. You manage a whole lot in this <laughs> county. And um, I had one question on the width. I went out to the site, and it appears the, the sidewalk that's going to be connecting to the new sidewalk is approximately seven and a half to eight feet wide, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to get the width for the crossing to be kind of comparable? I know you have to cover what the signal requires and those standards, we something to look at. Yeah. And then the second thing I saw when I came out there, and Kevin, Kevin don't kill me, because I may be mistaken, <laughs> but there is a remaining ball field that is right adjacent to that big gravel lot and where the path is gonna go to Page Middle there's about 76 feet that's not paved from the paved portion of that softball field mm -hmm. to where we're creating this crossing. Mm -hmm. On the middle school side? On the high school side of what we're looking at, and I have pictures of it. I, I tried to get them on up there, but it didn't work. But I propose only about 76 feet while you're doing that sidewalk if you create that sidewalk connection to that group, you are now creating connectivity from the parking lot. They don't have to head all the way in and around. They can go all pavement and do a quick connection there and then across to Page Middle. So I wonder if you'd be willing to look at that as you're putting that infrastructure in. You're talking where the new sidewalk at Page Middle comes to Arno Road and then crosses to the new parking lot that's under gravel. Correct. Okay. And so where the gravel is, is that ball field going to stay there, Kevin, or is it going to go away? That ball field will stay there. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a soccer field. And there is, in our current contract, uh, our contractor is to finish the rest of that sidewalk okay. over to the, connect to the high school. Because what I'm, where I'm seeing the connection is actually a baseball diamond, and that's why I'm not sure. This is softball. The softball, the softball field. field. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm so non-sporty, aren't I? <laughs> it's a softball field. Mm -hmm. And so, like, at that, at that one portion of the parking lot, it's really neat. You walk through a gate. You get into, you know, where you're watching the game. Everything's paved. It goes over here, and then it's just grass. Mm -hmm. And then you have right here where you're doing your... You're, so this is just a great piece to connect mm -hmm. okay. for sidewalk. Could I ask for that to be done with the high school for that connection? Yeah, we'll look into that. Okay. okay. But understand that front lot where the gravel is. Yes, sir. Is a temporary lot. Okay. Okay, so we're really not done with with that okay. portion of that lot. Absolutely. But we will look into that. Is something okay. going there, Kevin? Pardon? Is something going on this gravel lot? Is something going on in the gravel lot? Uh, you said it was temporary. What's going to be on there in the future? Yes. Well, we're going to, we're going to, part of it's going to be a bioretention pond, mm -hmm. okay? But to build the new building, I'm getting rid of one parking lot, and I've got to have a place to put them until the second parking lot is built, the replacement parking lot. So this lot. is a temporary parking lot? That is correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think, I think you're still misunderstanding what Beth's talking about. And so I'll try to clarify because I think I know what you're talking about. She's talking about where they currently walk. So if you're crossing over from the bus lane parking lot from the middle school and you cross over to the high school side, <coughs> just south of where you've got the where you're proposing the new crosswalk, and you then you head south where you're going. Um, on are your, closing that gap. Pardon. So you're, you're exactly. You're, I've got it on the drawing. Mm -hmm. So you're you're. What they do now is what I think Beth's talking about. They cross over from the bus lanes there at the middle school where the buses are going in. They cross over Arno, and then they, they head south, and they're going. So then the softball field's on their right, and there's a dugout. There's, that's where they currently walk to get up to then the parking lot. And what she's saying is, I, can we add? Okay. Yeah, to extend so, that sidewalk to Arno Road. Well, it, no. It'll be parallel to Arno. It'll be Kevin. parallel to Arno Road. It would tee at your at your proposed sidewalk on this plan. What I'm can I show you a photo or is that unprofessional? Sure. Or I'll just do it afterwards. We I have a photo. That. I have this and then I have the uh, photo. What we need, Mr. Fortner, so is a Connect commitment from you to make connectivity in this. Yes. Can you yeah. do that? Yeah. 
What she's saying is she's wanting, and I agree with this because we were actually talking about it, is two sidewalks. One going in from parallel on Arno Road in, in front of the softball field where they currently walk because there's, there's the uh, dugout, there's grassy field, then there's Arno Road, and then there's Page High School. Room. Excuse me, I'm sorry. We don't have room between the highway right away and Arno Road to put a sidewalk parallel with Arno Road. Okay. Okay. And that's fine. That's what she was talking so about. What though. we prefer to do is where we cross at the middle school and mm -hmm. cross over Arno Road. There's a sidewalk, if you've looked at the drawing there, that goes toward to the north toward Arno Road. And I think what we're proposing is to not think, we're proposing to connect that sidewalk mm -hmm. so they've got a sidewalk all the way. Correct. From yeah, the there, high school. there currently is a sidewalk from the parking lot to the, I guess, the west of the softball field that's currently there, and then it stops in the grass right. because the temporary field was the band practice field. Correct. And they paved it for the construction workers and extra parking right. or whatever. And what you're proposing is to continue extending it, building the crosswalk, and then going over to Page Middle School. Beth, did you resolve that in your yeah. subcommittee meeting? And connecting. Well, he's saying there's not enough right away to make a sidewalk. Right to well, we just looked at it, and actually there is, I think, I think they're both right, that the fence is going to move with the widening, but where we're talking, the existing dugout's not going to move. There is a room for the a sidewalk to go straight in and intersect. Right, right where the grass is, I agree. Not right on the road, but in the grassy area behind it. Our concern is how close that is to Arno Road. Mm -hmm. Will there be a fence Running again or not? With Arno Road. Will they have a fence there like they do now or not, do you think? They will have a fence there, Commissioner, but my concern is a fence is not going to stop a vehicle if they leave the road. No, and the fence is not going to stop a vehicle if um, kids are going to walk that anyway to get to a path. If we think the kids are going to leave a dugout, go back onto the campus, go farther this way, then they get a sidewalk, then go around to cross, we're not, we're fooling ourselves. What they want to do is be on paved surface. If they go from the dugout straight over, which is what they're going to do on grass, let's let them do it on just one skinny little sidewalk so they stay on pavement and get on a safe crossing to push a button. So I feel pretty strongly about this and I'm willing to make an amendment if my colleagues would support me. But kids, I went out there personally to watch this and it's already happening. So it's going to happen, so let's make at least a, a small little path there that's paved so people are not in the grass. Okay. It also you know? detour, it will detour them, to, her, to Beth's point, the, the proposed uh, connectability of these two sidewalks from the high school to go all the way there. It's a long path. I mean, we think it's doing a great job, but these are kids that are not going to do it. I was when I was driving home uh, during school there was a girl walking on Arno but if she had a sidewalk and we may say well why can't she just walk in the grass no I think if she actually had a visual sidewalk behind there to walk down to the new crosswalk area including the other sidewalk I think it's how much I think room Kevin is between the dugout and the road to put a sidewalk it could be very narrow too not a big a wide but a narrow it will, it will yeah. I think it will actually encourage them to walk over there versus Everybody the road scale in their pocket you <laughs> might get four feet of sidewalk in there. i think That's that would good. be that would okay. be walking in the grass yep okay. that'd be great kevin thank you and i appreciate your he is so keen on safety that's the number one for all of us the okay. safety but if we can make that work anyone else have a comment work. yeah i have a comment so we were talking about in our july meeting the whole purpose of doing this to make safety across going back and forth um we talked about uh, the fact that the middle school and high school share band instruments, like big, big ones where they're mm -hmm. rolling them. I don't feel like six feet would be big enough if that's what we're talking about from the middle school to the high school and that crosswalk. So we can make that as wide. If somebody wants, we can make it eight feet wide. I'm thinking like 10 feet. Can we make it that big? Mm. Do you see an issue? Let's see. And I will the crosswalk? The highway department. I'm not going to let 10 feet hold us up on approval. I hope. And and would the crosswalk on the actual highway be the same width as the proposed sidewalk? I have to match them. Okay. And when you were talking a few minutes ago, you're you were saying something about crossing. I 
I think you said this, crossing bars. So when it flashes yellow and then solid yellow and then red, red, and then the cross person, I mean, the little person says, you know, you can walk now. Will there actually be bars that go down or you're no. just waiting? Okay. No bars. So my question too is besides the yellow and red, will there be any other uh, identification? I mean, other than this the actual on the road, any yes, other lighting there, out there? Yes, ma'am. There will also be all the, the crosswalk signage requirements. That's through the MUD, MUDCO, I guess it is. Yeah, the MUTCD, the Manual mm -hmm. Uniform Traffic Control Devices. Mm -hmm. With it, because this is a hybrid type signal, it's it's basically kind of like a, a an automobile traffic signal. It just looks a little bit different. There's no green. It basically it just, there are no lights on it for the cars when, for them to go through. It just activates when somebody hits a button. So that okay. the cars get the warning, the flashing warnings, the caution warnings before it goes red to a stop condition. So because it will be a true stop condition, her this, we'll have a, uh, because it will be a true shop stop condition, this kind of details how the, the traffic signals look. Okay, yeah. Okay. In addition to the crosswalk on either side, we'll actually have stop bars and signage for people, to, for a, a place for automobiles to stop um, on the road. On the road before, uh, well back from the crosswalk stop so that they're not right, right up on right. the mm -hmm. And I think the reason why I'm so passionate about this, Beth, as well, whether it's Page High School or any other high school, I mean, our schools are our big asset here in Williamson County. You know this. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. But when we're building new schools, we take all this into consideration. The old schools, we're trying to update it. And I think in July when we were talking about this, about the kids after hours crossing over, well, that's a community there, just like it's a community at Franklin High School, at mm -hmm. Ravenwood High School. I mean, it's a community mm -hmm. of, of schools there. And so we need to protect that. We need to protect our kids. I'm not sure if you're aware, but a girl was hit there last fall at, ba at a basketball. Um, do y'all know about that? Yes. And he, like, totally didn't see her. But she was at the middle school doing some ex you know, after school activities, her brother was playing in the basketball game. So she walked across to the basketball game to see her brother because we're a community. And sometimes the middle school football team, they all walk over because they play on the high school fields on, on some, you know, nights that they play. So the boy that hit her, he was pulling out going north on Arno. And fortunately, he had just pulled out and he totally didn't see her and hit her. I mean, she, other than bruises, she was okay. But, you know, I think that's why I was just so passionate, not about Paige, just about Paige, but whatever older schools that we're updating, we need to take all of it into account. Mm -hmm. Also, um, I would like to discuss about not waiting till phase two, because I'm thinking phase two is what we approved in July, which is um, where the office and stuff is now at, at the middle school going up. So, I mean, we've been working on phase one for quite a while. I've been, you know, I've been watching it for a long time. I, I just feel like this isn't too important to protect our kids, especially with all the construction going out there and people not paying attention, paying attention and looking at the schools and what's going on. And, and, and there's so many cars on Arno Road. I think it needs to be done sooner than later. I appreciate that. We've got to wait for the highway department to get their widening project done. I don't know when that's going to be complete. It's, it's actually starting because they're moving the fences I understand, now. Yeah. but it's also stopped again, too, because there's nobody working on it for the last two and a half, two well, and a half weeks. And but but the, yeah, and I I'm not trying to that. debate. Yeah. We've got a lot of site work to do out in front of the school before we can ever think of putting that traffic signal out there. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of regrading. There's bioretention mm -hmm. ponds. There's just a whole lot of work to do. And, and I understand that. I'm just saying that while we're doing all this and everything starts back up, I would I would like to propose we do it sooner than waiting till phase two because we don't even know when phase one's going to finish. Well, so how soon do you think you can do it, Kevin? We had a pre-construction meeting for phase two of Page Middle this afternoon at two, okay. and I asked the architects to try to incorporate the crosswalk and signalization within phase two of page mm -hmm. middle great not phase one or phase two of page high but for the middle school great okay. all right great. so we've had a lot of discussion so that we're clear on your commitments on the sidewalk i'm let, let me try it and you tell me if i'm right or wrong four foot behind the dugout to yes, connect sir. to the proposed 10 foot 
fence across the road and a 10-foot crosswalk across the road right is that that's what? satisfactory to us good Can we I clear make one, one quick question Kevin, is that going to put you in a bind if you have an eight-foot trail and you got to go into a ten-foot sidewalk? Like, don't we want to? No, we'll okay. buy it out. Okay, great. I just didn't want to like hold your feet to the fire. Or something that you know, an eight feet might be satisfactory. Okay, so Thanks. you Give had you your... whatever you want. <laughs> so you had your go. so you had your meeting today to discuss. It. So when would they actually start phase one, and will this be at the beginning of it? Phase one of the high school. I mean, school. I'm sorry, phase two of the middle school we're going to finish phase one first i know that was my point is okay. like it's you know it takes a long time to build really nice buildings and i appreciate it because it looks really great out there and i'm excited about all the other new construction so uh, i guess my question is, is when question? do you think that this you know the sidewalks and crosswalks will be in i can't give you a date on that until i see a how year or two or oh it's going to be within the time frame of phase two going in as soon as I can't give you an exact mm -hmm. date yet, mm -hmm. uh, okay? I mean, we haven't even sat down with the contractor mm -hmm. to get a schedule, a time schedule. I mean, we've just put it out for bid. So we had a pre-bid meeting today with the general contractors. The next thing that we're gonna have is the bid opening, and that's gonna be in October. I think that one is scheduled for the 16th, if I'm not mistaken, okay? And then we'll issue a notice to proceed when the first contractor gets done with their work. I can't turn the site over to another contractor until the first one is done. I've got the possibility of the existing contractor bidding and being the sex successful bidder for phase two. Phase two. Mm -hmm. If that occurs, it would be in our best interest, I think, from a standpoint of transitioning from building one to building two and let them finish up all their work and not have two contractors going at each other. And I think it will make for an easier transition. Mm -hmm. But we, con we contractors don't get along very well. But normally they don't. <laughs> Anything else? No, other than maybe you can just keep us updated on as you know some things just so we know and we can one thing we post to the in focus on mm -hmm. wcs's website we try to put a project update in there monthly okay okay and there you go you know okay. that's that's what i think i can do okay, okay. anything else your motion Move for approval second. Is there a second? second motion made and seconded any further discussion Kevin, we don't need hey. to add those yeah. with a motion, right? We were okay with just a regular motion. We've discussed it all. We don't have to put it as a condition for approval or anything. As we, amended on the floor. Yeah. I don't think we've made an amendment, though. Watch me. Okay. <laughs> Kevin? I'm good with it. you have a comment? I just wanted to make sure that the motion included the changes to the sidewalk okay. that were discussed. Mm -hmm. we Can did. I withdraw my motion and include that? Is that okay? That's fine. I've Start brought my motion. I'm going to move for approval with the four-foot sidewalk and the crosswalk being um, approximately 10 feet. All right. All right. Is there a second on the revised motion? Second. We're probably not doing this right right now, are we, Council? You're okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it was just luck. Is there a second? Second. See, motion made and second. Did you prepare to vote? Vote now. Here's your papers. Thank you. Record. Motion carries. Thank you, gentlemen. May I Thank give you. one comment? Yes, Absolutely. Sir. I want to talk about the traffic light for a minute. <laughs> this, this new hybrid system was just presented to us today. It may be that we would go back to the normal hanging traffic light with a green, yellow, and a red. Don't do this, Kevin. I'm just saying what, what could happen. You're making this too complicated. All right. Well, then we'll do this one. Buy the traffic light. We'll get you a traffic light and get it in there. All Thank right. you. Thank you Thanks. so much. All right. The motion carries. Thank you. Uh, well, we're done. Uh, we have two, three withdrawals. Yes. Motion to adjourn. So moved. I did it myself. Thank you. Make sure something's